Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Subcompact Recoil Championship of the World! This is a three-way battle royale lasting for 15 rounds each for a total of 45 rounds. In the red corner, weighing in at 1 pound 0.9 ounces, the SIG P365! In the blue corner, weighing in at 1 pound 2.4 ounces, the bigger brother, the SIG P365 XL! And in the yellow corner, the challenger weighing in at 1 pound 4.2 ounces, the Icarus Precision Elite Combo! Let's get ready to recall! Okay, gentlemen, I give you the rules in the locker room. I want a nice clean fight. No recoils below the belt, touch muzzles, and go to your respective corners. Recoil and heat are to firearms what death and taxes are to life. That is to say, they are a certainty. But there are often ways to mitigate these negative effects. In the case of firearms, our ability to take a shot and then recover back into our sight alignment and sight picture is fundamentally important, as follow-on shots are necessary for competition or self-defense. The quicker this occurs, the more rounds we can accurately and safely fire downrange. Physics tells us that the smaller and lighter the firearm, the more it will recoil compared to a larger one using the same ammo. And the SIG P365 and XL are definitely in the subcompact categories. Today, we're bringing you a head-to-head -head comparison of the recoil from the SIG P365, <clears throat> the XL, and the Icarus Precision Elite Combo, which has the PMM barrel and compensator and Icarus Precision's new 365 slide design. The Icarus setup takes a 365 barrel and slide and adds a compensator that brings the total length to that of the XL, which is also why I'm including the XL in the head-to-head -head comparison. It also lightens up the slide with lightning holes and increased serrations. I'll have a separate video for the review for the Icarus Precision Elite Combo, but I wanted to get some more time behind the gun so that I can have a very thorough review for viewers. So this video is the first step in assessment. <clears throat> I tried to make this as much of an apples to apples comparison as I could. All three firearms will use stock recoil springs. All have Holosun 507K optics and all will use the same ammo to be as consistent as possible. Because of the nature of the proprietary rail on the SIG grips, I have to use a Picatinny rail adapter piece for the recoil measuring device. This adapter is only 0.3 ounces, but otherwise this should minimize variables and allow for a true comparison between each setup. We're going to accomplish this setup and testing using the Mantis X10 Elite, which has a recoil analysis feature providing four data points. And these points are muzzle rise, which is the peak angular rise of the muzzle after the shot breaks, recovery time, which is how long it takes for the firearm to settle after the shot, recoil angle, which is the angle to the left or right that the gun moves as it recoils upward, and recoil width, which is the width of the loop formed by the upward and downward movement of the firearm. I would like to point out that PMM has already done a video specific to their compensators, which is worth a watch. And their setup is arguably more laboratory controlled than mine as he uses a chronograph and a recoil leverage device and multiple types of ammo. I'll provide a link in the description. This video is going to try to see what the complete Icarus precision package does in terms of recoil mitigation compared to stock setups. And I'm doing this testing not just for video purposes, but for my own knowledge as well. I intend to actually carry this firearm, so it doesn't help myself to try to rig the outcome in any way. So I'll be utilizing as consistent a grip and trigger control as I'm humanly capable of. But this is the potential human error factor though. I've got some spreadsheets ready to be filled in and a bucket full of ammo. So let's hit a 1980s montage, then come back for what we find out.
Before we get into the final results, a moment to thank our sponsors and contributors on this video. S2S 5-in-1 Gun Lube is our primary sponsor and makes this channel possible. All of the handguns in this video were lubed with S2S to make sure that they would run flawlessly. SPG1 Tactical has a running special with S2S where if you visit their site at s2sgunlube.com or use the link in the description, there will be an automatic 10% discount applied in cart at checkout. It's really great stuff and I highly recommend you pick some up. And a shout out to onlineammo.com. They are the fastest growing online supplier for all your ammunition needs, providing low prices and fast shipping. They've got some great stuff in the works, so if you're looking for ammo, which, I mean, of course we all are, head over to onlineammo.com to pick some up. If you're looking for great training, head over to Intuitive Self Protection at intuitivesp.com or the ISP Facebook page where you can find our training calendar and videos. A special thanks to Priority One Holsters who loaned us the SIG P365 so that we could accomplish this testing. If you're looking for a fantastic holster, be sure to head over to PriorityOneHolsters.com. Unfortunately, they don't have one for the Icarus Precision modules yet, but I'm hoping to get that changed. Lastly, please be sure to use those trigger fingers to tap or click on those like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. The comment section has had some great input from viewers, so be sure to join in and stay tuned for future videos. Now, the moment you've been waiting for. The results I got were actually pretty interesting. I was not surprised to see that the Icarus Precision Setup performed better than the stock configurations. What did surprise me was the percentage better. When I watched the PMM video prior to making this one, I was a little skeptical when they claimed that the PMM compensators had a 40 to 50% reduction in muzzle rise, even though they had direct video of the testing. I was so shocked at the outcome of the Icarus data from the Mantis that I actually ran a second string of fire to make sure I wasn't getting errors. The entire Icarus Elite package with a stock recoil spring netted a 50 to 60% reduction in muzzle rise compared to the 365 and the XL respectively. That's a pretty huge difference. We're looking at about a 5 to 6 degree difference if you round down. That may not sound like a lot, but at a distance of 10 yards, that's a 31.5 inch difference of where the muzzle is pointing towards the target. And this number obviously grows the further away you get. So why is this important? If it's not already self-explanatory, by reducing the amount of muzzle rise, you're also reducing the amount of time to get your sight alignment and sight picture back, and you're increasing the amount of time on target and safely doing so. Some other things that I noted during testing, the Icarus Elite combo had the best recoil width by between one to two degrees. This isn't a huge difference, but still suggests that the Icarus setup had a better handle on recoil. However, at least for me, the Icarus setup had the most extreme individual recoil angles. I'm not sure what contributed to this, as the average was still moderate, but as the muzzle rise and recoil width were so small, it appears that the recoil angle had very little effect on performance. Another thing noticed with the Mantis X10 Elite is that the recovery time seemed to act more like a split timer as opposed to a spatial reset point. So for consistency purposes, I tried to keep my rate of fire on a cadence. In my mind, this was more realistic as taking follow-on shots is an important consideration as recoil is concerned. And long pauses would also make the recovery times look skewed. Therefore, I maintained an average of a 0.5 second split on all 60 rounds. In retrospect, I should have shown video of the target as well so that you could see that my shots were all in one of those two to three inch paster targets, but Honestly, it was damn cold, I was on a time crunch, and I was by myself. So a lot of the extra B-roll I would have liked to have gotten got pushed aside for the sake of gathering the data, then getting warm, and then returning the 365. Overall though, this testing suggests with both empirical and subjective elements that the Icarus Precision Elite setup has a significantly flatter shooting profile with an easier recoil impulse, allowing for tighter shot groups at speed and or distance. This is due to factors such as the increased weight of the grip module, the reduced reciprocating mass on the slide, the compensator, and the integrated thumb rest. 
I feel like this was a fantastic first test into the performance capabilities of the product that Icarus Precision is bringing to the community. And I feel it takes a solid platform and turns it into a true elite system. Again, after I get some more trigger and carry time with this setup, I will provide a more detailed and thorough review on the grip module, the PMM barrel and compensator, and of course, Icarus's new foray into upgraded slides for the P365. Hopefully you found this video informative. I most certainly did. And at this point, it's reassuring my desire to use this weapon system to defend myself as my everyday carry. Hit up the comments section if you have any specific questions. If you enjoyed this testing type of video, stay tuned as I intend to make one utilizing the same process to test the efficacy of the DPM recoil springs in the 365, the XL, and the 320. I appreciate you watching, and as usual, stay safe, stay smart, and stay tactical, my friends.